Tanisha, did you get my slides this morning? I did, yes. Mm -hmm. right. So everything Perfect. should be on there. And how do you want to let you know to advance? Just say next or? No. Yeah, if you, yeah. And I can kind of just keep an eye out on kind of what's concluding on the okay. slide. But yeah, if you, if I'm delayed, just tell me next slide. Yeah, I'll just like, rub my next. Okay. <laughs>
It is three o'clock. I know there could be some who still trickle in, but I do see at least a couple of attendees out there. Um, to our attendees, thank you for joining us today. I have um, a couple of housekeeping items. They're over on the screen. Sorry to not look at you while I speak it. Um, but some things to keep in mind, this is being recorded. Um, so if you need to review it at a later point in time, you can do so. Um, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type any questions that you have to our presenters. Um, your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you, but they will be able to see your questions as you submit those. Um, this is one of many different sessions that are happening, so we encourage you to look at the strivescan.com slash Virginia webpage to take a look. Um, and yeah, that is it. I will now turn it over to our presenters. Great, thank you. Welcome everyone and welcome to our mental health and overall wellness on campus support services to support you panel for VACRO. My name is Tanisha Young and I am a first year admissions coordinator at the University of North Carolina Wilmington. And I'll let my panelists introduce themselves as well. Hello, my name is Jason Hodge. I'm an Associate Director for Special Programs with the University of Connecticut, located in Storis, Connecticut. Uh, my name is Scott Dallahans. I'm a Regional Representative for the Mid-Atlantic for the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And I'm Madeline Hux. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here at Western Carolina University. So thank you all for joining us today. We are really gonna be touching a little bit about mental health and overall wellness on the college campus. As you know, mental health is a huge crucial component of a college student's success. Um, there's a lot of different things that can happen throughout your four years of college that can kind of impact your mental health and overall wellness. So to start with the basics, mental health is a person's condition with regard to their psychological and emotional well-being. Some mental health concerns that may pop up for college students could be anxiety, depression, dealing with self-worth issues. And then the overall wellness component is the state of being in good health, especially as an active, actively pursued goal. So some areas of wellness that some students may uh, struggle with could be sleep, so staying up at those long hours, cramming for a test, that adjustment period from that high school to college life, also grief and loss, just overall well-being, different relationships. So we're going to talk a little bit about how each of our institutions can help support mental health for you as an individual and your overall wellness on the college campus. Wellness can involve a lot of various different components and categories and they're all kind of included on this wonderful color wheel. And so when you're thinking about wellness and what you may need as a college student on campus, really try to break it down to these various different categories, which can include physical, so your healthy quality of life, your emotional and mental well-being, so that can involve self-care, relaxation, stress reduction, environmental, so your lifestyle that is respectful of your surroundings, financial, effectively managing your economic life, so that can be financial security, having different jobs on campus, occupational, so finding that balance between work and leisure time, so that work can be academic work, but also work, like I said, if you're working on the college campus, social, those relationships that you have with others and how you interact with others on your campus, Intellectual, which is really your participation in scholastic, cultural, and community opportunities that may be offered. And then lastly, spiritual wellness. So your set of values, morals, principles, and beliefs that are true and held to yourself. So as we move through our presentation, a few tips of advice that we want you to keep in mind and leave our panel with is making sure that you're being a good self-advocate for yourself. So the only person that's going to know what's best for you is you. So really making sure that you advocate for yourself on the campus, making sure you're utilizing your voice, also planning ahead for the demands of college. Um, college, like I said, full four years, a lot of various different components that you may deal with. So just try to plan as early as possible of what may come and arise for you as a student and what you may need some extra help with. And that also leads to knowing your strengths and weaknesses. So what are you strong at? What are some areas of improvement? And making sure you're able to verbalize that to the appropriate person or contact on the college campus. 
And then lastly, staying connected, whether that be through social media outlets for the college, school newsletters that are sent out about upcoming programming. And then obviously all of us are a great resource for you to stay connected with each of our institutions and how we can service you as a resource. So we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about each of our respective institutions and then just another friendly reminder if you have questions you do not have to wait to the very end you can type them in the q a we will have a designated time to address those so feel free just to type them throughout the presentation and we'll get to them towards the end and we will receive a transcript of all the questions so if we don't get to them we will be able to follow up at a later date so let's go ahead oh sorry and additionally we will talk a little bit about these four components for each of our presentations. So accommodations, resources that are available, programming, and then a deeper dive into our respective colleges. So let's go ahead and first start with the University of North Carolina Wilmington. So we are located in Wilmington, North Carolina, right on the coast. So we're a beautiful coast town that has three surrounding beach communities, which can sometimes help with that mental health aspect if you really like to go lay out on the beach. Um, but we are a mid-sized institution with a little over 17,900 total students. An undergraduate breakdown of that is about 14,650. We offer 56 different majors that you can explore and 36 master degree programs and then four doctoral degree programs. So I just wanted to provide you a little glimpse of our academic profile. You're definitely more than welcome, like I said, to reach out to each of us if you want to learn more about our respective institutions and that admissions process throughout. But I want to talk a little bit what we're focusing on today. So mental health and your overall wellness on our campus. UNCW has various resources and departments to help you with each of those different levels of wellness and mental health. The first one that I'll speak about is our UNCW De Disability Resource Center. This is a helpful resource to utilize if you have an IEP or a 504 that you currently use at the high school level and you want to continue that in the college level and have some a certain accommodations that are made, whether it be in the academic classroom or in housings for your uh, residential life experience on the campus. We provide a various different accommodations based on your needs. So if they're visual hearing, a specific learning disability or your speech, we always have standard accommodations such as note takers and test modifications across the board. But you can see on this graphic here how for the various different needs that you may have, how we can really help you um, explore that support within the Disabilities Resource Office. If you would like to receive any of these accommodations that are listed or have something that's specialized to you, we do have an intake system that's completed online. And so our Disability Resource Center has a student portal that all of our students have access to, and they would just need to make sure that they submit the appropriate documentation. You'll go through an official review with the staff. They may contact you if there's more information that's needed or your medical provider. And then you'll actually go through a full student orientation. So they'll sit down with you one-on-one, -on -one, review the accommodations that have been given to you, how to utilize them. And then lastly, they'll provide you with all the documentation that you need to notify your faculty member once you register for your classes. So it's a very streamlined process. It's very easy and you're kind of helped along each process and each step. And then lastly, after you work through that process, we have the C-Lab, which is our strategy for enhancement for achievement. And that is where you're gonna be able to utilize all those accommodations in one solar spot online and all those different resources. So definitely I recommend if you have further questions about the Disability Resource Center, feel free to contact them and visit their webpage to learn a little bit more. At UNCW, we have specific programming across the board for mental health and wellness. And we like to call waves of wellness since we're a beach town, we like to play up the uh, literary or a little bit with the waves and the beach. But this is a great opportunity. The flagship of our wellness really is our counseling center. So our counseling center is our confidential resource that's free for students. And you can speak with the counselor if you are having any issues, regardless of what it may be throughout the academic school year. And they offer group counseling, individual one-on-one -on -one counseling that's available. And we also offer relationship counseling. So you have a significant other are going through some issues and wanted to go through counseling we do have that opportunity available as well. Our counseling center will do a lot of programming with some of our other departments to kind of help with that overall mental health. 
So some highlighted ones that I wanted to talk about is our relaxation station. And that happens every exam week. And that is where you are able to get some massages, healthy snacks throughout your exam week, get some school supplies that are needed to help just relieve stress. And then we always have weekly meditation due to COVID. It's now called Zen and Zoom. So we are still offering that just via the Zoom platform. And then lastly, my favorite that I always like to highlight, we do have a dog assistance program. We are now offering that with a minor this year, but Paws for People is actually a locally founded organization by a UNCW alum. And she brings dogs to campus and you can go through the coursework and she partners with some programming. So <clears throat> for Valentine's Day, we do canine and kisses. They've also done puppies and pizza. So just a really great thing if you wanted to pet on some lovely puppies throughout the year, a great experience. And then lastly, just talking about, again, overall wellness at our institution, we have in, um, implemented called U, UNCW Healthy Hawks. And this is where we broke down that whole wellness wheel and thinking about what can we service and what departments we have to really help attach each of these wellness categories for you. So if you know I'm having some emotional mental issues, this really helps you determine how you can explore that on our campus and get some support that's needed. So we have different departments such as our collaboration for assault response and education. So anyone who unfortunately has to deal with any domestic, domestic violence, anything sexual assault, we do have a program with that to provide support for those students. For engagement, we have our Campus Activities and Involvement Center, also known as CAKE. And that has over 250 clubs and organizations that you can partake in. For your financial wellness component, we have our Office of Scholarships and Financial Aid, where you can sit with a financial aid counselor, learn about TIS on how to create a budget, getting different scholarships, possibly seeing if you qualify for work study to work on campus. For that intellectual, we have our University Learning Center, which we have free tutoring services, test services for students, a writing and math lab that you can utilize. So we really want you to make sure that you have that academic support that's needed on the campus. For occupational, we have a wonderful UNCW Career Center and they put on different job and internship fairs throughout the year, as well as we have an online job portal called Handshake that you can utilize. Additionally, they do different special programming such as resume building, assessment tests, adequate dining. So if you ever had an interview where you were having an interview over lunch or dinner, how to appropriate that situation with your employer, potential employer. And then lastly, we have our physical and spiritual. So for our physical, we really want you to utilize our student health center. We have a full pharmacy, different medical services that are available, and then a wonderful campus recreation center that offers great group fitness, health promotions, a campus dietitian. So we really just want to highlight that in all these realms within your wellness, we have support located on our campus for you. So that's all that I have for UNCW, and I'm gonna go ahead and pass it uh, along to Jason. You are muted, Jason. The worst nightmare is being muted, thank you. Uh, so I think of health and wellness at the University of Connecticut, I think it, it falls into so many different facets of what we do and it's spread out so many different departments that we want to make sure that as many people as possible are receiving support. Um, so let me, let's go ahead with the first slide. Our center or for student health and wellness, the Shaw is, is called on campus, is the primary place where students would go when they're experiencing difficulty. And difficulty can take so many different types of directions, be it comfort at the university, being comfort with oneself, be it some of the challenges of day-to-day -day living, that we try to provide a wide variety of support options for our students because not every um, individual has the exact same challenges. And we see on the screen there's just a list of different types of services that are offered and there are two highlighted in yellow that I really do want to focus on as we go forward. But know that the University of Connecticut and many other universities uh, you know, represented here today and just out in the world are, care very deeply for the needs of, of students and the host of different challenges that they face going in both into adolescence and adulthood as well as just getting used to, to the stress of college living. Um, but here's just a sample of a number of them. I do want to talk about a few though. So the next slide. We talk about stress over food. 
And one thing that uh, college students uh, typically experience is the getting used to being on being away from home, getting used to um, eating in a dining hall, and having to self guide the, the challenge, self guide the eating process. And it can lead to a number of different circumstances. On the left side, uh, some of the eating disorders that students can experience while they're at, at college. Um, eating too much, eating too little, not eating in an appropriate pattern. Note that uh, at the University of Connecticut, we do provide support. So our eating um, disorder support team works with students and kind of identifying the needs and circumstances that they're facing while making healthy and, and positive um, food choice options. Our dining services unit also gets involved and helps the students look at you know, a particular allergy or dietary need. Um, do you have a particular food choice that is perhaps not as common as others, or do you just face something uh, hang up about food, perhaps a, um, an allergy to a particular diet and food, perhaps a lactose intolerance? So know that food, which we all love and can't get and can't do without, colleges and universities work to make sure that of all things, you're essentially receiving the kind of support necessary to make sure that you're eating healthy. Healthy eating lives to happiness leads to paying attention in class and getting along with the people around you. The other aspect that we're looking for is, uh, you know, unfortunately, some students when they come to college uh, perhaps engage in destructive behaviors or perhaps engage in destructive behaviors prior to coming to college and need to know that there is support. So the UConn Recovery Community is but one of a, of a nationwide effort to make sure that there are places to help students who have experienced addictions or substance use disorders. You know, um, a couple are cited here on the screen here, the alcohol uh, use, perhaps abuse, uh, drug abuse, um, addictive behaviors such as gambling, and other um, hard choice decisions that affect a student's day to day. Our recovery unit actually has a separate safe space for housing for students to, to meet, to stay over if they need to be out of the residence hall, to feel that they won't be judged, but to know that there is support for you, something that is typically very sensitive and sometimes even hard for parents to acknowledge with their children. If you have um, perhaps an addiction or, or substance use issue, there is support in college to help you uh, have a positive and productive life. In addition, you sometimes uh, health, uh, mental health and wellness concerns come up in terms of learning styles or adjusting to the college process. Our Center for Students with Disabilities, perhaps you have a challenge, uh, dyslexia, that's causing additional stress. Perhaps you are, are hard of hearing. Perhaps you just need a personal assistant, someone to help you with, with aspects and getting through college. Our CSD is there for you to kind of find what accommodations do you need be it where you were living on campus, how to get around campus, your mobility issue. This is not a mental health issue, but it can lead to over, over stress and then complications. So know that you may have some needs before you come to college. You wanna address those in a positive way up front to lessen some of the challenges you may face on a day-to-day -day basis. Academic accommodations is a big one. And um, because, you know, for the next slide, you will see a whole host of support options for students to take advantage of. Whether you need um, closed captioning on, on videos or note-taking assistance, or perhaps uh, you are want to be full-time but need a reduced course load um, to kind of help you get through a particularly tough semester. You may have a service animal that you rely on at home and want to bring the uh, type of service animal to campus. So there's some accommodations there. And you'd have to go through an assessment period with the, with the Center for Students with Disabilities in terms of what you may or may not be eligible for. But the key point now is that there are a host of opportunities and supports for you when you come to college to help level the playing field. Next up, a little about the University of Connecticut. And when I think about the, um, you know, even this aspect, uh, college, applying to college is challenging and stressful. And I'll make sure that you understand that we are here to help you. UConn offers multiple campuses for different types of settings for students. We are the flagship for the state. We have campuses located all around with different sizes, different locations, different comfort zones for our students, um, whether you're on the other water or in a, in a more of a major city or in a small New England college field. UConn offers different types of settings for different types of comfort levels. Next. One thing that is often a stressor for students when looking at college is feeling like they're going to fit in. Uh, 
I'm feeling like they're going to belong. And know that the University of Connecticut and again other colleges as well are trying to make sure that you feel encouraged and supported, no matter your ethnicity, no matter your socioeconomic background, no matter your gender preference. You know, uh, college should be a place where you can speak your mind and feel comfortable that you'll be appreciated for who you are and for what you bring to the table, but also that you will appreciate what others bring to the table um, and their perspectives. So we embrace diversity and cultural understanding. Know that, you know, a university setting is a good place to you to find yourself and to find out who you are and be comfortable with it. Next. You kind of got over 110 different areas of study you know, in agriculture, business, education, engineering, fine arts, liberal arts and sciences, nursing, and pharmacy. But one thing that tends to be a stressor is trying to decide what you want to do in college. And please know that uh, we have an undecided and exploratory program for you to, that if you want to apply, you don't quite know what it is you want to do, help you find a major that best suits you. Deciding in the next four years of life is often a stressor in college. We want you to know that you can be accepted and not knowing what you want to do for the rest of your life. A couple aspects for the application process and what's also um, a little stressful. Know that, you know, we certainly look at your grades, once that you're doing well in a competitive profile. The essay, which is typically a spot that students, if you're comfortable, can talk about the challenges and experiences you faced. You don't have to, though. You can't put in a supplemental uh, uh, statement. You don't have to make your essay about challenges you, you've had you can if you wish. Uh, recommendation letters from your counselors, your teachers, employers, and coaches can also speak well to your abilities and strengths. Know that you kind of test optional. And we know that one thing that students are, are always concerned about this year is, can I get a uh, SAT or ACT? Can I be able to take a test to get into college? I know that my arts and many of the universities are being flexible with test scores this year because it's an access issue. And we know that we don't want to shut you out because you don't have that opportunity. And of course, there's an application fee, but we can work with you on that as well. And last but not least, the deadlines. I'll leave those up for the screen, just to let you know the UConn, of course. We don't have early action, we don't have early decision. We do have some earlier dates for our scholarship honors and a combined undergraduate graduate programs. We release all of our decisions on March 1. You have until May 1 to deposit or to apply to our, one of our regional campuses. And with that, I'll turn over to the University of Illinois at Champaign, Urbana. Scott? Thank you. So um, I just wanted to give a start off giving an overview of the University of Illinois campus. Um, it's no secret we are a large institution with over 34,000 undergraduate students uh, and over 50,000 when you include our graduate students. And sometimes that can uh, overwhelm students, uh, make them feel like at a large school, they may not get the same attention as they would at a smaller institution. Um, but there are a lot of ways that uh, we have that you can make a big school feel small. We have a student to faculty ratio of about 18 to one and about 80% uh, of your classes will have 50 students or less. Um, and all the professors also have open office hours so you can uh, access them at any time. Um, uh, though there's a great thing about the university, there's many different support services that you can find on campus. So um, these are just a list of some of the things that I'll be going into uh, in deeper today. Um, Next slide, if you can. Thank you. So the first service I want to discuss is our Career Service Center. Um, the Career Center at the University of Illinois has many different services uh, and resources that they can offer our undergraduate population. We have things like getting 30-minute uh, career coaching appointments with career coaches to discuss uh, what your future goals are and how to accomplish them. Uh, they can do things like review your personal statements, resumes, cover letters, and even your LinkedIn profile. Do things like mock interviews uh, to make yourself really as marketable as possible, whether that be for an internship while you're still in school or for your career post-graduation. Um, and they also offer health professions advising for many of our pre-professional programs, which include like pre-med, dental, optometry, um, physician assistant, veterinary, or physical and occupational therapy. One of my favorite things about our career center is uh, they host a variety of college specific career fairs each year. Um, and this can be great for networking internships and future, uh, future careers. We had over 9,700 unique employers uh, on campus that were recruiting our students last year. Um, and if you it didn't have, for whatever reason, you didn't have clothes for this, we have another great service that our uh, career center has is a, um, what's called a, um, career closet where you can get, um, provide gently, gently used student, uh, sorry, gently used professional clothing for the students to wear. So just to give you a quick overview of some of the employers that were on our campus last year, um, names like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, uh, and more. Um, 
and I'm gonna go on. Um, we also have a really good undergraduate research department and study abroad offices if you're interested in those. Um, so these are different types of support uh, service centers, but these are, are great if you're interested in it. Uh, at the University of Illinois, about 68% of our uh, alumni participate in some sort of research on campus, and they can do that early on in their career by working with this research department. Um, and this uh, spans all fields, not just for like STEM-based majors. Um, and you can also see we have a great study abroad department where about uh, over a quarter of our students are taking part in some sort of study abroad program. Um, and that can be a semester long program or something shorter over the fall, winter or spring breaks. They really individualize a plan um, to cater to you and your major. Uh, so thanks. So. Um, we also have great services for your physical and mental health. Um, so here is our McKinley Health Center. Uh, has a variety, you can go there for a variety of different ailments. You can schedule regular doctor's appointments uh, just like you would if you're at home here, or you can go to them in case of an emergency. We also have programs like Dial a Nurse where you can have confidential calls taken by registered nurses uh, who offer medical advice about the illness, injuries, um, and they, other health-related concerns, and then they will re make recommendations for you to seek additional care. We also have a thing called Sportwell Clinic uh, where you can get physical therapy and athletic training. Um, and McKinley has also expanded their telehealth services during COVID-19. Our counseling center offers a variety of counseling options, including uh, individual group or couples counseling. They also have many outreach programs for student body uh, and the public. And these focus on things like ADHD, text anxiety, uh, time management. Um, and another outreach program that our counseling center hosts is our Inner Voices Social Theater. Um, so with the skilled attention to both perform scripted material and the shaping of post-performance audience dialogues, Inner Voices uh, will use uh, performance as a common point of reference and presents complexities of the human experience um, and engenders empathetic reasoning and provides common ground for exchange of ideas, uh, which will be vital to the cultivation of a just society. Um, and the Counseling Center also has um, some great online tools as well which uh, you can find here. I put a link in the, in the slide. Um, there's some self-help brochures about some of the things I talked about, uh, including like the ADHD, text anxiety, time management, um, and other things that may be helpful to you now or in your future college career. Um, another resource that the University of Illinois offers is our Disability Resource and Education Service Center, um, better known as DREZ. DREZ was actually the first and oldest post-secondary disability support service program in the world and uh, are known for things like having the first wheelchair accessible fixed bus system and the first accessible university residence halls. Um, so. The mission of the Division of Disability Resources and Educational Services is to ensure that qualified individuals with disabilities are afforded an equal opportunity to participate in and benefit from the program, services, and activities of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign through the identification and enactment of reasonable modifications to institutional policies uh, and procedures and the provision of uh, effective auxiliary aids and services, the establishment of innovative educational services and pursuit of interdisciplinary disability research. So um, as you can see on the next slide, um, the DREZ has an, uh, an increasing amount of students served each year. So there's, they're recognizing uh, more and more uh, IEPs and, and 504 plans like we talked about before um, to help students across all different types of majors and colleges. And the DREZ graduation rates are over 91%. So they're very successful at helping students get the accommodations that they need. Um, and if you ever need to register for a service as a student, I just wanted to give you an idea of what that may look like. So you would first fill out an online application and provide DREZ with the documentation. Uh, and once this is done, you'll be assigned an access specialist who is, uh, you'll be able to discuss your plan with uh, and then uh, build a plan for accommodations and services from there. And I, sorry, um, and then, um, uh, DREZ academic accommodations and port services include a variety of academic accommodations. So you can see things like um, conversion of text to alternative formats, um, coaching, academic labs, um, really priority registration. So making sure that you guys uh, have everything that you need to be successful. DREZ also offers uh, non-academic support services. So this would include things like physical therapy, transportation services, um, housing access, um, and sports and recreation programs uh, for, for students that need it. 
So another thing that DRES will do with their students is uh, uh, have a transition program from high school. Um, and these include four different, uh, include different camps, fairs, seminars um, that will help you transition smoothly into your post-secondary institution. So we have things like STEM camps, um, transition fairs, um, summer meetings before school, before your freshman year um, and your seminars on your first year of, uh, on campus. And then another thing that they do with helping with transition is when you graduate, they help you can transition from grad school or to your employment after school um, and, and help you get the things that you would need in terms of accommodations um, for grad school or for your employment after school as well. Um, so we are um, at Illinois, um, our admissions team uh, contact info is on the next slide here. Um, so if you have any um, questions, you can give us a call and speak to a counselor one on one, or you can reach out to me directly at uh, scotthd at illinois.edu. Um, but if you ever forget that the admissions.illinois.edu uh, is our website, admissions at illinois.edu, you can email them and they'll forward it to me uh, as the regional representative. Um, so thank you and I'll pass it to Madeline now. All right. Well, as he said, my name is Madeline, in case you've forgotten. Um, so I am from Western Carolina University, and you might not know where that is, and that's completely okay. We are located in Cullowee, North Carolina, which is about an hour west of Asheville. Some really quick facts about Western. We have about 12,000 students. Uh, we have over 120 majors and minors. We do have a 17 to one student staff ratio. So we do try to keep those class sizes pretty small for you guys. That way you're able to build relationships with everyone on campus, not just your peers, not just your uh, faculty and staff members, but anyone possible that is walking around on campus, we try to get you involved. We are a very big community school. All right, so one thing that you're gonna hear on campus is called the CAPS office. Um, we shorten a lot of our names on campus, so bear with me as I throw some random stuff at you, but what this means is counseling and psychological services. So instead of saying that big old mouthful, we just shorten it to CAPS. Um, some of the things that they offer is COPE. So with COPE, this is a great opportunity for you to learn tools to quickly manage emotional distress uh, while developing a clear goal to, of what you want to uh, change in your life. So any kind of goals that you have that you're wanting to fix and you want a quick fix, uh, that would be your go-to for that. They also offer individual sessions, so those one-on-ones. Uh, we do have crisis services available, whether that's suicide, um, any kind of sexual assault or anything like that. There's a whole list available online. I won't bore you with all the immediate details, but if you have further questions, reach out to me and I can redirect you to our website. And then we also have groups. So those can be anything between uh, student athlete groups or the LGBTQ plus groups. Um, we also have a variety of other groups that are doing things such as like painting while they're sitting there talking. That way they're not just sitting around if that's not something you're comfortable with. I completely understand that. Growing up with a mother who was a counselor, that was not my thing. So finding a group where I could sit there and be distracted by painting and doing something I loved. And there's a lot of other opportunities Opportunities, but definitely reach out if you want to learn more. Um, some of the things that they do work with it are things such as anxiety and depression, grief, trauma, relationships. With the relationships, that's not just with your uh, sexual partner, that can be with your roommate, that can be with a family member, or even if you're having trouble with friends on campus. Um, but definitely reach out to them if you have any trouble on campus and you just need to talk to someone, they're available for just one session or you can meet with them for longer. So some of the resources that we do have on campus, um, one that I would really like to highlight is our offices of accessibility resources. So if you need something aside from your mental wellness and you need more academic based uh, wellness on campus, this is a great resource for you. Um, they can help with any kind of accommodation. So if you have an IEP or a 504, um, you would talk to them about some of the accommodations that you may need. This can be um, anything between having someone read aloud any kind of test, um, having someone who sits with you as you take a little bit longer because um, maybe they'll give you an extension on your time to take a test or a quiz, whatever else. Um, you may have some other special agreements with your professors. So uh, there are some professors who don't like for you to have your laptop in class. And so you might have that accommodation to be able to have that so you can type your notes and do what you need to. Um, and then there's also electronic formats for your textbooks. And um, I'm not 100% on all the specific information for those textbooks and what exactly that looks like 
But if you need that accommodation, definitely reach out to our Office of Accessibility Resources. That way they can help make sure that you get the best support academically that you can. We also offer free tutoring to, uh, to our students. So keep that in mind as you do if you're interested in Western, that we do offer that and take advantage of it because it is free. Um, I know that I was there a lot for my chemistry class and there's no shame in it. Um, they're there to help you. They're also there to not just help you study for tests, but they'll review your papers if you need to. So some other resources that we have on campus. I always encourage students to get involved. I know my mental health went down whenever I was trying to keep to myself and stay focused on the schoolwork and not have that social life. So some of the things that our CAPS office might encourage you to do is to get involved. There are a lot of great ways to get involved on campus. Uh, we do have what's called the WOW. Um, that is our week of welcome. So those are different activities to sort of welcome students to campus and just get you out there involved and meet new people. They have different events going on on a campus. So for example, last weekend, they did a drive-in theater to try to help students get out there and still have fun even with the effects of COVID. So they showed Hocus Pocus in one of the parking lots and it was a great time for everyone who went. Uh, we do also have other small events. Those can be within your resident hall. So your RA may put on uh, some different events like um, s'mores or movies or game night, whatever it is. Get involved in those activities. And your RA is your resident assistant. So it's an upperclassman who's going to uh, sort of help with any kind of uh, residential living issues that you may have, they're there to help you throughout this process of living on campus. We also have our CRC. So like I said, I know that we shorten everything on campus, but your CRC is your campus recreation center. We do have a very large rock wall that you can climb, take lessons, do whatever you want. Um, we do offer um, a lot of weights and machines, whatever you need. We offer group classes. We do have a lot of clubs and in your rules. Um, if you're interested in jo joining a club and organization, uh, feel free to do that. We have over 170. So definitely get involved with those things as well. They may encourage you to get outside. Western is known for um, being one of the top outdoor adventure schools. So we were named that uh, for four years in a row and that's something that we take a lot of pride in. We, since we are in the mountains of North Carolina, we are very rural. However, we do have uh, hiking trails that are on campus, bike trails. So if you um, like to ride your bike um, and you're really interested in that, they have uh, trails. They also go to the Blue Ridge Parkway, which is very close by. And there's another, a number of other opportunities like rafting, kayaking, going on trips, meeting new people. Just get out there and get involved because that can help you with that social um, health that we talked about earlier. Um, but other than that, there's I can't talk any more about all the programs just because I'll bore you guys to death and there's way too many. But if you have questions about specific ones, definitely reach out to me and ask. I am a recent graduate, so I know a lot about the different clubs and organizations. I've been there. I've you know, been involved in a lot of things on campus. So I can at least help point you in the right direction, even if I can't answer a specific question for you. And that goes for all of us. We may not know the specific answer that you're looking for, but we can at least point you in the right direction with someone on our campus who can help you. So that is all that we have for you guys today. Um, here is our contact information. Feel free to reach out to us via email or phone um, and feel free to use this time to go ahead and start asking questions if you have any and we will slowly start answering those and um, hopefully give you the best information possible. While we're waiting on some questions to come in, I know uh, one popular question with Western specifically uh, with the counseling services. Uh, students always ask, like, what if I don't like my counselor that I get uh, within the psychological services that we have? What, do, what would you guys recommend for them to do? Do you have to stick with that one counselor or do you have other services available? Yeah, I would say we definitely are flexible in all capacities. So if you go through one or two sessions and you feel like that counselor may not be the best suit for you, you're definitely more than welcome to ask and get another recommendation for someone within our office. And then we do have a lot of outreach with our Wilmington community. So if for some reason there's someone in our staff that you may not be feeling it would be a good fit, we can be an outsource for you to find someone in the greater Wilmington community that may be able to better suit your needs. Yeah, but much the same. You know, we know that um, 
personalities mix in different and various ways. So we provide the um, we have large enough staff typically to handle um, different interests, different backgrounds, different representations. But if you need something that you know we don't have, we can certainly work with you to find something in the community that might kind of better you know get you to where you need to go. All right, and another popular question that we typically get is how often do I see my counselor? I know for us specifically at Western, it's up to you. Um, if you're needing those weekly meetings, if you're needing monthly or biweekly, whatever you need, they're there to help you. Um, so that's something that you would need to talk to your counselor about as far as how often you guys want to meet and what's gonna be the best fit for you. How does it look at you, um, your other institutions? Yeah, I would say it's it's up to you guys. It's up to you guys to build a plan. Um, there's also different types of counselors on campus too. So we have, you know, like in the the, the health center, they may more have um, psychiatric help if you need that. And instead of a counselor, um, if you may need some sort of medication, you may want to go to the McKinley Health Center. But if you're just looking for specific counseling, then you want to just go to the counseling center. Um, so just be open uh, or be, talk to the counselors and try to figure out a plan that works for you, I would say. And I think that applies to most schools. Yeah, same for us as well. Just being open with your communication of what you need and how often you need it and we're able to work around your schedule. Yeah. Now we're getting you ready to go off into the real world um, in colleges, colleges in particular time in life, but it's not ideally that you're gonna be in college for the rest of your life. So some of our services are designed with kind of a more interaction early, but knowing that we need to get you ready to an independent place where you can still ask still receive support in the real world but know that you're also capable of being okay without the, the some of the aspects and support that you get so our goal is to get you to be ready to be fine without us i think is ultimately the goal of any support program i think we have time for one more question i know um talking about the mental well-being and just your overall health on campus one big concern for students is your safety. And um, so a lot of students will come in and they're asking like, what kind of safety like implementations like do you have on campus to ensure that they are going to be okay uh, whenever they come to your school? I know for Western specifically, we have a text message and email alert system that the students and their parents can sign up for. That way, if it's, you know, if there's any like crazy weather, for example, there was a severe thunderstorm a few weeks ago and they sent out a text message telling us, hey, there's a thunderstorm, uh, a severe thunderstorm morning so please you know this is what you need to do in order to prepare this is how you stay safe and then there's other um, services that we have available too but it's a long list so but what do you guys have that you take a lot of pride in yeah um, UNCW has their own UNCW police department so those are sworn in officers that are dedicated only to our campus location so they do frequent rounds around campus in the residence halls. Um, additionally, they will do any ride-alongs necessarily. So if you feel safe, unsafe on campus and just want a quick ride back to your residential hall, that's something that they offer. And then we have these emergency call boxes on campus. So we have over 180 that connect directly to that police department. So you can click on it, let them know what issue you may be having. They have a 30 to 60 second response time since they're right on campus. So there are some helpful things that we have that are utilized additionally with having security and security guards that man our front desk within our residence hall areas and all of our residence hall areas are access only. Yeah, uh, similar. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, we have actually um, three police departments because there's three town, uh, the, so the Champaign Police Department, Urbana, and then um, you know, the campus police as well. And we also have like the blue light system for um, on campus. Something that's unique to us, I think, is we have what's called uh, safe walks and safe rides. Um, so if you ever feel um, that you need to walk across campus, um, there's a specific app that you can um, use and utilize and it'll, it'll actually send somebody to a lot of like actually the football players will be the person that walks with you across campus to make sure that you feel safe or that they have a car that's specifically designed to pick you up to, to so you feel safe across campus uh, as well. Um, so I, there's a lot of resources in terms of safety on campus. Safety on campus begins actually at orientation for, for many of our institutions. And it's a one part that I think a lot of people want to sneak, skip through or move through as fast as possible. 
But honestly, um, pay attention to the, the talks that have been orientation about campus safety, about the resources available on campus, about some education around alcohol and other uh, choices that you will make. That is the foundation for knowing what you have access to. And as a community, where our goal is to educate the community, community, everybody, so that when you have a difficulty, someone's there knows what to do or knows where to refer you. Uh, so colleges, all of us, um, tend to know that the better prepared you a crisis or a circumstance, in the end, the better result will, will, will come out. So definitely um, take advantage of what, what you're getting, pay attention to those around you, and also make good choices. You know, part of what happens in any community is who is brought in from outside of the community. So, you know, when you're having guests on campus um, that are your responsibility, make sure you bring in good people, not just anybody who doesn't respect the university in the way that you would as a student there. I think some, some issues simply happen because we have guests that don't have a, an affiliation or a commitment to the university the way our students do. So be, always be mindful of that. All right, I think that is about all we have time for today in terms of questions. Um, so thank you all for joining us. I just wanted to let the attendees know when you close the window, um, there's going to be a link to a quick four question survey that we'd really appreciate uh, that you complete for any feedback. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you all and thank you to our presenters.